In this video, we're going to study the last two tissue types, muscle tissue and nervous tissue, or you can call it neural tissue or even nerve tissue, either one. So muscle tissue, you can see there's three different types of muscle tissue, and we'll just do a brief discussion of nervous tissue. So here's our three types. We have skeletal muscle, smooth muscle, and cardiac muscle. So muscle tissue, of course, is one of the four primary body tissues. And there's three types of muscle tissue, skeletal, cardiac, and smooth. Muscle makes up about 50% of body weight. 40% of that would be skeletal muscle. And then the remaining 10% would be cardiac or heart muscle and smooth muscle. So let's talk about each one of those. Let's look at skeletal muscle first. Skeletal muscle is just like what you'd expect, um, like your biceps or your quads. You know, th these are the muscles that contract and help you move your joints and, and bones. Then we have um, cardiac muscle that's found in your heart. And then we have smooth muscle, which is um, it's a little more hard to define, but it's found in areas like the gastrointestinal tract, the vaginal wall and arteries and veins, and also around um, respiratory passages. Um, they constrict and dilate and open up passages. So let's look at skeletal muscle first. Skeletal muscle has what's called striations, or it's striated. You notice the muscle fibers running this way, yet perpendicular to the fiber. Um, you see all these little lines. Those are striations. It says multinucleated fibers. Well, there's three cells that you're looking at here, three muscle fibers. And you can see there's significantly more nuclei than there are cells so it's multinucleated and of course it's attached to skeletal muscle and skeletal muscle is voluntary meaning you have control over that you, you can track those muscles when you choose to cardiac muscle also has striations um, there's a couple significant differences though um, one is that it's branched you can see the branching here fairly clearly um, you can see it a little bit here in these pictures another thing to notice is what's called these intercalated discs. There's one, there's one, and there's another one. At these intercalated discs is where two adjacent cells interact with each other and they, they connect, they physically connect um, two cells together. So these are shorter and more branched than these skeletal muscles. Some of these skeletal muscle fibers can be up to like a foot long. Um, skeletal or cardiac muscle rather is involuntary, meaning you don't have control over it, like you can't control when when your when how your heart beats. And last, we have smooth muscle. Remember that's found in like the GI tract, the stomach, and arteries and veins. Smooth muscle. Um, what's most distinctive about that is that it's not striated, so you don't see those um, those banding patterns here. They have a single nucleus or uninucleated fibers. So you'll just see one nucleus per cell. And they also have this um, like spindle shape to them they're, they're, where they get like pointy towards the end. Unfortunately, that's not always obvious in all the slides because the slide is in two dimensions, but um, they do, do have a spindle shape. So here they are again. I'm just gonna point out the key features. Skeletal muscle is multinucleated and it's long, has striations. Cardiac muscle also striated and has these intercalated discs and just one nuclei per, per cell or per fiber. And smooth muscle does not have striations. Let's look at skeletal muscle first. So once again, note, notice that all these nuclei are on the periphery or like the outer edge of these cells. So this would be like one long cell here. This would be another long cell here. Notice those striations. So this is skeletal muscle, long muscle fibers. Here we are again. This shows us a muscle fiber. There's some nuclei. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six or seven muscle fibers. Striated, multinucleated, long, cylindrical. So look for those characteristics. Here's another one. You can see that um, muscle fibers running this way, there, there's these perpendicular striations. And also if you look carefully, you see that there's also striations that run the length of the cell as well. So sometimes you have to look for that. Here we are real zoomed in, here's a nucleus. 
um, the muscle fibers running in this direction. You can see the striations running perpendicular to the longitudinal axis of the muscle. This is what it more this is what it would be more like in our lab looking under a microscope. We have nucleus here on the perimeter. You can see the striations. This is a pretty nice picture. Skeletal muscle. Here's some more skeletal muscle. This is one taken from a you know a larger sample I zoomed in on. You can see the all the nuclei located on the perimeter. You don't see striations in all of these. You certainly see the striations in this fiber and this fiber, but not all of them have striations that are visible. Here's another one that um, more resembles something you might see in the lab. You can see the striations here, but they're not evident on all of the cells. Now this is skeletal muscle in cross section. So I think a distinguishing um, feature is that we have the, the, the nuclei again located around the perimeter or the periphery of the cell. All right, this is a tendon up here, and tendons connect bone to muscle, and this is skeletal muscle. You can't see the striations very well on this one. Um, here's another one where you can. Can you tell which one is the tendon and which one is the muscle? Well, notice the striations here. So this is the skeletal muscle, and this down here is the tendon. So this would be dense, regular connective tissue, and this would be skeletal muscle tissue. Here's cardiac muscle. Notice again that the cells are going to be branching. We have um, one nucleus per cell instead of multiple, and it's not located on the, on the perimeter of the cell. It's, it's right in the middle. And the most important feature to look for, other than the striations, um, would be these intercalated discs. You'll see these intercalated discs connecting the cells. And you only find cardiac muscle in the walls of the heart. So what I mean by wall the heart, here's a heart that's been sectioned. Um, this is the myocardium or, or the musculature, and this is what it would look like under a scope. So we're looking at the wall of a heart here. Here's an intercalated disc, and if you zoom in on that, you can see it fairly well. This is connecting two adjacent cells. You can see the striations well here. You can see the single nuclei, and you can see the intercalated discs. Here's another stain, different colors. You can see the branching um, cardiac fiber here. Look at that, it branches. You can see the intercalated discs and the central nuclei. Here's some more cardiac muscle. You're not gonna see preparations um, this, this distinctive, I don't think. This is pretty nice. There's intercalated disc, intercalated disc. You can see the striations are very clear. Here's more cardiac muscle. This is what you might encounter under your microscope. Notice they're not, they're not um, cylindrical like the skeletal muscle was. There's more branching here. And you've got to look carefully for these intercalated discs. There's a lot of them. You just got to look for them. Here's a sample I chose because it's difficult to tell. So you can't rely on the intercalated discs in this case. Um, what you're relying on is the fact that it's branched. But if you look around, you will find a couple. Um, here's an intercalated disc there. There's an intercalated disc over there. So you got to hunt for them oftentimes. This is what it'll be like when you're under your microscope. Here's a different preparation, different stains. There's the intercalated discs, and you can see the striations everywhere. All right, now on to smooth muscle. Smooth muscle, remember, has this spindle shape. They come to like a point. Not super evident um, when you look at these slides, though. It's not always clear where the cell ends. But anytime you study these um, muscles, it's always like real estate, location, location, location. You want to know what you're looking at. If you're looking at the intestine, you're likely to find smooth muscle. If you're in the heart, it's cardiac muscle. So notice there's no striations here. This is a different stain, but notice again, no striations. This is showing a shorter cell, spindle shaped, only one nucleus per cell. Here's some more smooth muscle zoomed in. 
There's another sample of smooth muscle. Importantly, you're not seeing striated cells. So that's the hint that you're looking at smooth muscle. So this would be a nucleus here and the fiber would be, would be this area here. Here's where location pays off. If you're not sure what you're looking at, um, it's helpful to know where in the body you're at. So right now this is the small intestine and we're looking at this little, little portion right here, the muscular wall. So this would be um, longitudinal sections of smooth muscle. You can see no striations and they also come to a point, some of the cells, like they spindle shape, see that? And this would be cross section. Here's more smooth muscle. Oh, and this is tough. Um, this is a special stain that shows a distinction between the smooth muscle and the adjacent connective tissue. So you're looking at the vaginal wall right here. This is smooth muscle, and this blue stuff is connective tissue. This next slide is the same slide, but using a, um, a stain that you're probably more familiar with. So can you tell where the smooth muscle is? And can you tell where the connective tissue is? Here's a connective tissue. The connective tissue is more red. So this is the, these, these are collagen fibers up here. This would be dense, irregular connective tissue. And this is the smooth muscle in here. So it looks pretty similar until you um, develop an eye for this. So in summary, here's what we have. We have skeletal muscle. Look for long cylindrical cells that are multinucleated nucleus by the periphery. Look for the striations. Cardiac muscle, the cells will be branching and you'll have these intercalated discs. You'll just have one nucleus. And smooth muscle, that's the most challenging. Um, but just notice there's no striations. One nucleus again, usually towards the center of the cell. The last of the four tissues that we're going to study is nervous tissue. So again, nervous tissue is one of the four primary body tissues. It's found in the brain, the spinal cord, and also in these peripheral nerves. Almost all of the mass of your nervous of your nervous tissue is located in your central nervous system and spinal cord. I think like 96% of it is located there. Only 4% is in the periphery. So there's two types of cells. The first type is the neuron. You're familiar with that. Those are nerve cells that respond to stimuli by conducting electrical impulses through processes called dendrites and axons. So this is a cell. These are the dendrites, these little processes that come off. And these are the axons. We'll have a whole unit dedicated to um, the nervous system. So we'll just touch on the, the basics here. And there's also um, neuroglia or glial cells. Those are cells that support the neuron, but they don't conduct impulses. So I don't have a picture of those, but we'll see them in just a moment. So those support the neurons by, um, by phagocytosis and providing nutrients um, and things like that to the neuron. So here we are, here's a nerve cell, a little cartoon, and then over here is the real thing under a scope. So we can see this is the body of the neuron, this is the nucleus here, and then these projections that come off are either axons or dendrites. Um, we don't know which ones, we'll concern ourselves with that later. And then these other um, little nuclei, these are the nuclei of the neural glia, or the supporting um, nervous tissue. Here's a great picture. You won't see anything like this under the scope, but these are the nuclei of the neural glia, and this is the neuron here. Um, maybe this is an axon or dendrite. We don't know for sure. Another fantastic picture. Um, this is obviously the neuron, and then these are the nuclei of, of the neural glia. Here's a zoomed in picture of a neuron neuroglial cells on the side. There's a process coming off of the neuron. This is what you're more, um, more likely to see in the lab. This is a cross section of a spinal cord. We're gonna zoom in on that, on this portion here. Now you can start to see some differentiation. Um, we have these things. If we get a little closer, we see that these are the neurons here. And these other things, 
those are the um, the neural glia. So these right here are the neurons. We don't have to do too much with nervous tissue at this point, other than identify that it's nervous tissue and locate the neurons in the neural glia. Here we are again, something else you might encounter on um, the stain like this. These are the neurons I'm pointing to, and then these would be the nuclei of the neural glia. And a lot of this other tissue, um, we're not sure what it is, if it's just supporting tissue, or if it's part of the ac um, axons and dendrites of, of these other neurons. Remember, we're just looking at a two-dimensional um, slice here. Here's one zoomed in. Here's a neuron with a process coming off. Here's another neuron. These would be neural glia over here. Can you spot the neurons here? Well, there's a few. Here's one. There's one. There's another one. And these other cells, again, would be the neural glia. All right, that's nervous tissue.